soul when you know that it is you who is seated on the throne we give you praise and we honor you O lord as we sit down to listen to your word we pray that jehovah god that we shall open our hearts and minds that we shall hear from you and as, as even as we leave this place we shall not be the same again in jesus name we pray and believe amen, amen. you may have your seats Buona asifiwe. praise the lord amen. i'm fine i'm happy i'm born again I thank God to be in the midst of the youth. I feel young again. I was a youth in this same, same church 20, 25 years ago as a youth secretary. I can see we have the good leadership. And I thank God for the youth. Youth, Bonasifiwe. Uh, this, Bonasifiwe. Uh, this morning, I'm here to say that the Lord is here with us and that we should rejoice in suffering. Bonasifiwe. Neighbor rejoice in suffering. That even suffering, that we should still rejoice. Bona Sifiwe. Uh, this month, our theme has been drawn from uh, the book of Romans, book of James, and the main theme is about rejoicing regardless what. Rejoicing regardless what. And as we go through this thing, we have been reminded of Habakkuk, which is our annual theme. Uh, in the book of Habakkuk, from chapter 1 to chapter 3, they are about, there's a lot of complaints about what was happening in their lives. And there was a lot of grumbling. And Habakkuk was there and he chose not to complain. He chose to rejoice. And in uh, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17, if you may move there with me. Habakkuk says, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord of my strength, he makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me trend on my high places. This morning, I want to encourage us to be like Habakkuk. That he looked around, people were complaining, there was nothing. There was nothing in the There was nothing in the field. There was nothing in the pen. There was no sheep. There was nothing that had been harvested. People complained. Yet, he chose to rejoice in the Lord. I don't know what you may be going through this morning. That may, you may feel like you're so down. You're so down pressed. But the Lord this morning is reminding you, no matter what you're going through, that you should rejoice. You should rejoice. And following this theme, uh, the Lord would like to build our faith in the issue of rejoicing. And as the year ends, as the year ends, you may ask yourself, what is there to rejoice? You may look back, maybe some will look back from when COVID started and look at what you've gone through. Students who have just been in a marathon session, those who are in high school, some of them have not had the four years like they should. Others who are this morning is telling us to rejoice. And when it tells us to rejoice, there is nothing less. It is just rejoicing. And when we are told in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 3, that to rejoice in tribulation, to rejoice in suffering, it looks like it's not normal. It's not normal, surely, in the eyes of human beings. But it is okay with the Lord, and it is well with the Lord, because he is with us. He's going to walk with us. He has promised that it is not going to be easy, but he is ready to walk with us and give us victory. Yeah, the book of Romans, 
chapter 5 uh, reminds us if we can read through from verse 1 to 5 so that we draw the uh, we look at what had happened before the suffering therefore since we have been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into his grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope and glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in suffering. Knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not push us to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Yes, we should rejoice. And rejoicing in tribulation will not be easy. Rejoicing in suffering will not be easy. But we, as Christians, we have been given Jesus Christ who even he himself suffered and was even nailed at the cross. I don't think that any one of us has suffered to that point, to that level of being nailed at the cross. Yet, he did not complain. Yet, he rejoiced and praised the Lord. When we look also at the story of Job, he suffered, he lost everything that he had, including his children and every property that he had. But instead of complaining instead of grumbling he decided or he chose to rejoice rejoicing in suffering will be a choice for us as Christians a choice that we ought to make because we have been called to suffer we've been called to go through a lot of things even in our service to God as you serve others in the ministry of the youth as you serve others in this church as you serve others wherever God has placed you it is not going to be easy. You will go through a lot. You will go through a lot even where you are working, if you are working with people who do not have faith, who do not know God. But yet, we are reminded that we should rejoice. Praise God. So despite all situations that we are going through, we should rejoice. Why? Because God is our strength. Like Habakkuk, we shall confess that he is our strength. That even in the hard moments that we should seek to know God's will in the situations that we are in. That we should rejoice for the good things which are ahead because there are good things ahead. And because of the salvation of God, he will give us salvation even in our suffering. So when we look at our surrounding and we look around us, we look at our friends who are doing better than us, we look at our family, which will may be so down, maybe financially, maybe so down with sickness, maybe so down with different issues of life. We may lack something to rejoice, but yet we have a good reason to rejoice because we have Christ in our hearts who gives us the reason to rejoice. Who is the hope of the glory? So God has given us his spirit. So that his spirit that indwells in us may give us the power to rejoice even when we go through suffering. That even in this suffering, it is not by our own power, not by our own might, not by our own thinking, but it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we shall be able to rejoice. So Jesus Christ himself is our role model because he went through it. He went through trials. He went through temptations. He went through suffering and came out victoriously. So we as Christians called by the name of the Lord, we shall be able to go through this because he is going to work through us, through our faith, like we are told in Romans, that in verse 3, that more than that we rejoice in suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Yes, Rejoicing in suffering, we shall. When we are supposed to be complaining, we shall not complain. Because when you suffer, actually you should be hurting. It hurts to suffer. There is no joy in suffering. But yet rejoicing talks about joy. We will have 
to rejoice because the Lord is going to walk with us this kind of walk of suffering. And when we are able to endure as Christians, that we shall be, God is going to build up our character, our faith, and our character will bring up hope. Hope that will, even others who do not know Christ will look at us and say, surely I want to serve the God of so and so. I want to serve the God of Mary. I want to serve the God of Samuel. I want to serve the God of every of us because of the hope that they see in us that we will not be like the wild people, worldly people who will complain when there is nothing, when there is no harvest, when there is nothing in the pen, when there is nothing to rejoice about, but we shall have that hope of Christ. And this hope will not ashamed us. And what do I want to say also? That even in our service to God, as the Lord has called us to serve him with everything that we have, including our finances, like today we are going to give our, our harvests, that our character, when we have gone through this kind of endurance, and when we have gone through this kind of character building, our character will be built up to a point that we are able to give back to the Lord. One as if we were. That we shall not just say the Lord has done for me. Hmm? You know, we, we have very, very, very big testimonies that we can give what the Lord has done. But the Lord wants to build our character today to a point that we are able to give back to him. To say, yes, Lord, you have blessed me. Yes, Lord, I have received this and that from you. My children are well. Even being in good health is a blessing. So that we shall be able to tell the Lord, I'm coming to give back to you. I'm coming to bring back my, what I have harvested from you. That Jehovah God, help me. That even today as we give, we shall not just give for the purpose of giving, but we shall give because we know that the Lord has taken us through suffering. He has helped us to endure. He has helped our character to grow as Christians that we have grown from one level of glory to another, that we shall be able to say thank you, Lord. We will be able to say thank you with not just words, but even what he has given to us. One as if you That the fruit of the Holy Spirit has been cultivated in our lives through this suffering, that even as we go this tri through these tribulations, that we, have, we will have the character of love we will have the character of peace, the, fruits of the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, joy, patience, generosity, which is we are talking about today, faithfulness, and even self-control as young people, that we will be able to bear fruit for Christ in our rejoicing in suffering. Uh, that the apostles, even in their persecutions, they were Look at the character Paul. Because it is Paul who's written the book of Roman. He's addressing other fellow Christians, maybe who had, were almost giving up. But today, he's encouraging us that no matter what you're going through this morning, no matter what kind of life you've gone through since you were born, that there is a reason to rejoice. Even me alone is a reason to rejoice in suffering. As if you were. That we shall rejoice no matter what. That we shall not just uh, be Christians, but we shall be Christians who do that which is right. As we build up our character in Christ, that Christ's glory will be seen in us and we will have chosen the right thing when we decide to follow Christ. We will have chosen the hope of glory, Jesus Christ, which will not disappoint us. And that Christ, even through this suffering, will see us through, will give us victory even over our enemies. So let us choose to rejoice. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 says that I have fought a good fight and I have won the race. He did not just say this. He's, he had gone through enough. He had gone through suffering and he, has, he had conquered and said that he had 
fought a good fight and he had won the race. So even as Christians, as young as we are at our age, let us have something to tell God. When we have gone through this and we have gone through it victoriously, that we shall say like Timothy, that we have fought a good fight of faith and we have won the race. So in the book of Psalms 30, David was so distressed, but he encouraged himself in the Lord. He rejoiced in the Lord. So let us also be like David, who decided to rejoice even in suffering because he knew that the Lord would give him victory. And as we continue rejoicing, the Lord will keep his promises in our lives and us. We shall be more than conquerors. And just like in Philippians 4.4, 4, it says that rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That even though we suffer, we shall rejoice. And we may ask ourselves this morning, when trials come, we may ask ourselves, what is this that is going to make us rejoice? We will rejoice because of, number one, trials are a test of our faith. We have to go through the test. Just like gold is passed through fire and comes out, will be in a test when we rejoice. And the Lord is going to build our character to be what he wants us to be. So, let us know that this is a test and shows that our faith is true in God. Experiences we go through, we will be able to pass that test. We will also uh, be rejoicing because of knowing that as Christians have faith, the faith that God has given us will help us face these trials without grumbling with a positive mindset. We will be able to put up with any kind of suffering knowing that Christ is with us. With us. So instead of complaining, we will glorify in tribulation. So when these trials come, when we face these trials, it will be a time to know that this is part of our growth as Christians and that the Lord will strengthen us and build a relationship in us through this suffering. So trials also will be coming to push us Christians towards God's help. At times, as Christians, we have a very smooth life. Eh? Life is so good, we forget about God. At times, sickness will be brought your way. Suffering will come your way. Lack will come your way. So that God will remind you that he is still God. That he will look back and remember, I need to ask for help from God. I need to seek God for help. And God will come through for us and give us victory. So may the Lord help us. When we sit back and think we have reached, may the Lord help us to see that he is our God and that we need him. So trials will also come to build our patience. At times we are very impatient, yet patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So we will suffer so that our patience will be built up. And when God does this, he is refining us and teaching us that he still loves us and that we are still his chosen. Trials will also come to point to us the hope that Christians have need to have and to remind us to stand strong in the midst of the storm. Uh, in the book of James chapter 1 verse 2 talks about the same message that Paul talks about in Romans. James says that we should count it joy. Count it joy my brother when you meet trials of various kinds. Rejoice in suffering. So this morning, I'm here to encourage us 
to rejoice in suffering, to count it joy even through our suffering. And the singers sang this song, which I believe we can also sing, that, when we, that I must have the Savior with me, for I dare not walk alone, that we will not be able to conquer, we will not be able to stand in suffering unless we have the Savior with us. So this morning, I want to encourage us with this song that says, I must have the Savior with me. It says that, I must have the Savior with me, for I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me, on his arms around me, around me throne. Then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will. I will go without a mama and his footsteps fall still. I must have the Savior with me for my faith at best is weak. He can with powers of comfort that no other can speak. Then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will. I will go without a mama. And his footsteps follow still. I must have the Savior with me. In a long what much of life. Through the tempest and the sunshine. Through the battle and the strife, then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will. I will go without a mama, and his footsteps follow still. I want to encourage us that we shall go without a mama. We shall walk without 